Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Have you ever needed to log in to your remote Linux workstation with a full desktop experience without having to first log into the console and enable screen sharing? How about sharing the resources of a single workstation or server with multiple users, each with their own separate desktop session simultaneously? Windows Server has had terminal or remote desktop services available for many years, and for a while Linux options were a bit lacking in functionality or quite complex to configure. Also, Microsoft client access licenses for multiple users are not free. In the past, I used proprietary closed source products like No Machine and found that while they worked, the performance and resource usage always left something to be desired, in my opinion. Fortunately, open source software has come a long way recently, and one of those projects is called XRDP from the Neutrino Labs team. Let's test drive it now. For this demonstration, I've chosen Fedora Workstation with a modest 8 gigs RAM and 64 gigs storage VM. Let's do a standard vanilla install. Welcome to Fedora. Let's install to the hard drive and breeze through this as quickly as we can. I'll edit out some of the uh, longer parts uh, to make sure you guys don't get bored with me. So English looks good. English keyboard. America Los Angeles time zone is good. Um, we've got the 64 gig uh, disk pre-selected, so that looks good. So we just click on done. And then we can uh, begin installation. And uh, that'll take a few minutes, but I'll just edit this out. And, uh, we should be just about done, and we are. So I'm gonna click on finish installation. And then we'll go ahead and uh, reboot our freshly installed uh, Fedora workstation machine. Let's click Restart here. Okay. And there we go. Welcome to Fedora Linux 36. So we'll just click Start Setup. I think I'll turn off automatic problem reporting today, leave location services running. Enable third-party repositories. Again, vanilla stuff, nothing special here. Skip the online accounts. Okay, for my first full uh, user is user1. And let's give user1 a password. I'll enter it twice to confirm. And there we go, next. And we're all done. So we can start using Fedora uh, Linux. So we'll skip the uh, GNOME 42 uh, tour. Of course, we've seen that many times before. Let's do a little housekeeping, change the appearance uh, to dark style, and uh, click on sharing here. I want to show you guys that sharing is turned off and will be turned off uh, throughout this demonstration. So no file sharing, remote desktop, media sharing, or remote login via SSH, uh, those are all turned off throughout this video because we won't be using that functionality. So computer name is Fedora 36. So that's the version we're using today. Uh, for power, I'm gonna turn off the screen blanker. Don't need that. Uh, displays, display resolution, I'll switch to uh, 1920 by 1080. And we'll hit apply and we'll keep the changes. And then um, I'd like to click on accessibility and make the text uh, size large. So this video looks a little better and it's more legible. There we go. Okay. So um, let's first of all um, make sure we've got all the updates installed. There are a lot of them since it's been a few months since this Fedora 36 ISO has been released. So uh, this will take a while. Um, we'll continue when this is done. And here we go. Um, 
logging in as user one, freshly updated and patch system. Okay, so what's next? Uh, let's go to uh, launch Firefox. Let's close that privacy notice tab. And uh, let's make it full screen. Let's go to the Neutrino Labs XRDP project on GitHub. It's an open source project. It's under regular and heavy development. So it's github.com slash Neutrino Labs. It's a small four person team last I checked. Uh, XRDP. Okay, as you can see, uh, XRDP, an open source RDP server. So you've got all the, uh, the entire source here available uh, for your perusal. So there we go, overview shows. Um, it provides a graphical login to remote machines using Microsoft Remote Desktop Protocol. XRDP accepts connections from a variety of RDP clients. So there they list them, including Neutrino's own Neutrino RDP. I will use Microsoft Remote Desktop Client for this demonstration today. RDP transport is encrypted using TLS by default, so it is reasonably secure. Again, it's fully configurable, but out of the box security is always good. So connect to a Linux desktop using RDP from anywhere Reconnect to an existing session, so you can disconnect and have it run in the background. Uh, session resizing, RDP, VNC, proxy. So again, XRDP uh, layers over the XVNC protocol, virtual network computing uh, for display. So drive redirection, audio redirection, Microsoft, microphone redirection. Uh, the uh, target is primarily x86 and ARM are the uh, most mature. Uh, remote FX codec is available, but they recommend x86 processors to get a fully accelerated experience. Let me give you a uh, quick start. Um, which port? 3389 it listens on. Ubuntu Debian instructions, Red Hat instructions, compiling hints and tips, a whole bunch of stuff here. So yeah, um, a lot of the stuff makes good reading material. Yes, um, software updates have been installed. Okay, so let's do the deed. Let's launch Terminal. And uh, let's make the font a little bigger here. And let's install things. So sudo dnf install xrdp and neofetch. So we have a nice overview of the resource usage and what we're running here. So let me enter my password for the DNF installation, these packages, and it's done. Okay, so um, sudo systemctl enable now xrdp. So the um, xrdp uh, service is running here. So let's do a status to check and make sure it's successful. Yep, active running. The uh, port it's listens to or listening on is uh, port 3389, right? The standard uh, RDP protocol uh, port. So if you're running a firewall, we're on a local uh, secure network. But if you are running a firewall, please make sure to open uh, port 3389 TCP. Okay, well, we won't need to do that here for this uh, quick demo. Okay, let's clear the screen and let's go to uh, slash itsy slash xrdp because that's where the configuration any files or initialization, initialization files uh, live. So let's look at the session manager uh, dot any file. As you can see, uh, it's listening to the local host. Uh, listen port is 3350 for the session manager. And uh, so that's separate from the RDP uh, server, right? Which is 3389. So you, you can do group check here for terminal server users. Um, you know, check uh, various policies such as clipboard. 
Max sessions out of the box is 50. That's a bit too much for eight gigs of RAM. I would recommend uh, at least 128 gigs if you want that many uh, uh, users that are using graphical uh, desktop environment. Uh, kill disconnect, disconnected is false, which means you can disconnect at any time and have your session run in the background. You can change that as you see fit here. Idle timeouts um, and uh, logging. And you can uh, make further various changes here. Um, drive red re redirection, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'll leave it to you to do further explorations on this here. Here's the xrdp.ini file. So any version one. So it forks a new process for each incoming connection. So it listens on port 3389, of course. So this is the RDP server. TCP no delay is true. Keep alive is true. Security layers negotiate. Crypt TLS encryption level is high. And it uses the SSL protocols, TLS version 1.2 and 1.3 out of the box. So it is reasonably secure already. Again, depending on your organization's policies, you can change it as you see fit. Okay. So a few other sundry items here. The RDP server, um, login screen dimensions, logo, et cetera, et cetera. And more logging options. session types, VNC configuration, uh, VNC proxy, RDP proxy, Neutrino RDP client settings, etc. Anyway, that's enough of that. Um, we'll just stick with the defaults here. Let's check our IP configuration to look for the IP address for this RDP server, and it's 10.1.10.190. So it's, again, a secure local network that I have running here for demonstrations. The outside world cannot access machines on this network. Okay, let's log out. So we're done with configuring the Fedora workstation server. So let's move over to our Windows 10 client. I could use Windows 11, but you know. Okay, let's launch remote desktop connection program, 10.1.10.190, which is our RDP server. Uh, let's go to local resources. So I have uh, local devices and resources set to only uh, share the local drives. That's what I usually use. Uh, I don't use much of any of these here. Um, you can do printers and clipboard if you see fit. Uh, display is the standard uh, full screen. Highest quality, since it's a local network, you can change this if you've got a slow remote connection as you would any other RDP server. So let's connect. Um, do you trust this remote connection? I think I do. It wants to uh, allow the remote computer to access our local drives, yes. So the identity of the remote computer cannot be verified. You want to connect anyway? Yes, of course. The name of certificate is XRDP. Let's view the certificate here. So issued to XRDP, issued by XRDP, so self-signed, I guess. These are the details, and so on. So you can add your this uh, certs uh, to your local machine as you see fit. Let's continue to connect. So there is our XRDP login screen. The session is XVNC, since that's the back end. We'll log in with user one and uh, the password. Click OK. And there we go. We've got our login session. So uh, let's uh, launch terminal. OK, again, this is over RDP connection. So it runs uh, pretty smoothly. Let's launch NeoFetch. So with uh, the RDP server running and us logged in, this is GNOME. 
got 1.5 gigs uh, memory used out of eight. Not too bad. Okay, so um, let's uh, sudo user add our second user, user2. Type in a password here, a sudoer. So let's give user2 a password with sudo password user2. Give user2 a password and retype it to make sure we've typed correctly. All right, so now let's uh, make user do sudoer. So sudo user mod dash ag for add group, add uh, user2 to group wheel. There you go. So user2 can now sudo as well. All right, let's. Uh, Reduce the size of this first remote desktop connection to our Fedora 36 server. And let's launch an additional remote desktop connection. Let's do the same thing here. Yes, we trust this server. So let's log in this time as user2. Let's enter user2's password. Click OK. And there we go, this is a brand new user. So it says, welcome to GNOME 42. Uh, do you wanna take the tour? No, let's not do that. So, all right, so we're now logged in as user two. So let's change the background from the default to the next one over. Yeah, let's choose this one. Not the next one over, but you know what I mean. <laughs> So we make this look a little different so you can, guys can distinguish the various sessions. So we're logged into as user two. Let's open a terminal, user two at Fedora 36. Okay, let's add, well, let's first do a NeoFetch. And um, as you can see, it's not quite double. So we had used 1.5 gigs with one user. Now we're using 2.4 gigs. So quite a bit less than double for two simultaneous users because there's a lot of shared libraries and shared memory going on here. So sudo user add user three. And let's give uh, user two's password. And uh, let's now uh, give user three password. So we'll do the same procedure as with user two. We'll type the new password twice. There we go. All right, let's also make user three a uh, sudo user by adding user three to the group wheel using this command. Okay, that's done. We don't want to discriminate, right? We want user one, two, and three to be sudo users. Okay, so we've got two sessions running now on the uh, RDP server, XRDP server, working pretty smoothly. So let's launch a new remote desktop connection for user three. Let's connect, let's do this again, log in as user three and enter the password, hit enter or I'll click okay, depending on what your preference is, nope. Got another tour offer? No, thanks. User three isn't interested either. Yes, we've had software installation uh, updates installed recently. Let's change the background to uh, this one. All right, cool. So now um, if I launch terminal, and uh, type neofetch. As you can see, we have three users running simultaneously, but instead of 4.5 gigs, we're, run, we're taking 3.2 gigs. Again, due to shared memory and shared libraries, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, we might be able to squeeze in, um, you know, 10 users with eight gigs of RAM. Um, 
but uh, that would be quite a squeeze, and they probably, even if they could log in, they couldn't do much with this uh, workstation. So uh, this is just for demonstration. But as you can see, uh, we've got these three uh, sessions running simultaneously, different users, completely different unique sessions. Let's log in as uh, user three one more time. And I'd like to show you what happens when we do this. So user three for the second time. So user three should have two sessions. Now you're gonna get a black screen initially. Um, I noticed uh, if you're a little patient, uh, for user three, you can have actually get away with, depending on your RAM, um, uh, a shared session. So for example, two separate people can log in from different locations uh, as user three and be able to share the desktop, a user three's desktop with each other. So as you can see, um, everything I do in one window for user three session, I, it, it shows up in the other user three session. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so um, that's next. Let me uh, maximize uh, one of user three's session and let me just log out. And when that happens, both user three remote desktop sessions get logged out. So I'm gonna close these two uh, remote desktop windows. And so we're left with user one and user two, side by side. Okay, let me uh, maximize uh, user two. Let me log out user two. There we go. So we've got users two and three logged out. So we're left with user one. So this is user one session. Let me maximize it. And uh, let me do a NeoFetch here. As you can see, we're back down to 1.5 gigs of RAM usage. So it did clean up after itself. With those sessions closed, XRDP handles RAM usage very well. Let's close this session. We don't log out, we'll just disconnect. So the session should be running in the background when we do this, just like with a regular Windows server. So let's reconnect to our Fedora 36 workstation. And yeah, I'll just click yes. So let's log in as user one and the uh, password. And there we go. We're back at it. This like like the session never we never left. Um, this should come in very handy if you needed to uh, you know be somewhere else or you know. Uh, suspend the session or, or I mean, uh, disconnect the session and drive into work or, you know, take the bus or whatever, and then uh, resume where you left off or so on and so forth. Anyway, um, let me uh, also demonstrate uh, the drive sharing over RDP. So as you can see, we're sharing uh, the Windows drives, local Windows drives. So this is what C drive, my C drive looks like, and this is what C backslash users look like. So I've got uh, a demo account in here, my Steven account and the public and the default user and all users, the usual stuff you see in Windows. So um, looks like uh, drive sharing over RDP is working great. All right, that's uh, pretty much all I have to show for you guys today. As you can see, out-of-the-box XRDP is very functional, yet allows a rich set of configurables to fit your policies and resources. For me, this is one of the last areas where Linux was perhaps lacking a bit. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe to see more Tech Talks. Until next time, take care and have lots of fun.